Well, hello, true Mexico friends. This is Paul, an English guy, showing you Mexico through my eyes. And today, I'm looking at the real reasons why there are so many lies about Mexico and its people. And you know, I see quotes, mainly out of the United States, calling Mexico a failed state. Open a far-right US site like Breitbart News, and you will read lies about Mexican immigration to the US, lies about Mexican people. And I've recently asked myself, why do these lies even exist? Why do some people and organizations tell these lies? And what motivates them to say such nonsense? Because definitely there is something in it for them to keep the lies fresh in people's minds. And considering these lies and nonsense really does affect the reputation of Mexico, and how its people are treated in daily life situations, I think it's very important that we do have a strong awareness of the real reasons and motivations behind the lies. But guys, before I continue, to some of you watching, please don't think this is some anti-US video. It is definitely not. I like the United States, and most people from the US of all races and creeds embrace Mexico positively. <music> So now let's look at the first reason why so many lies exist about Mexico. Anti-Mexican sentiment in the United States. And this underlying negative sentiment towards Mexico that does exist in some small pockets of US society goes all the way back to the Mexican-US war when Mexico was invaded by US soldiers and was eventually forced to concede territory in a contract that would no way be legal or accepted by the international community in today's world with stronger international laws and conventions. Now, what many people outside of the US and Mexico often forget is that thousands and thousands of Mexicans woke up one sunny morning and their family homes in dearest Mexico where they were born was now officially in the United States. Pretty crazy stuff. And those Mexicans were suddenly a minority group in the United States. And guys, what often happens to minority groups in any country of the world, they get treated badly. Now, I'm not going to go into all the details, but over the last 150 years and more, and up to present day, there are so many examples of Mexicans as a minority group in the US suffering from discrimination, suffering from the lies told about them. And my best explanation of what's happened is because Mexicans became a minority group on the land which was theirs, a toxic breeding ground formed for some people to bash Mexicans, to bash Mexico, to tell lies and to bring them all down. And it's continued up until present day. Sometimes it calms down, other times it explodes. And as we are about to find out, this situation is also exploited by certain people and organizations for their own benefit. So now the next reason why so many lies are told about Mexico, especially right now, is power. Political power, acquiring political power, winning votes. And I'm sure many of you are in the US and know a lot more than me about this, about the politicians who have stirred up anti-Mexican sentiment to win over voters. But of course, the most obvious and explosive example we are experiencing now is Trump. And as most people watching are aware of, he was very effective at stirring up that anti-Mexican sentiment I was just talking about because he knew that some US voters would react favorably to his lies about Mexico and blaming Mexicans for many of the US's problems. And of course, Mexicans weren't alone. Xenophobic and nationalistic policies were the centerpiece of his campaign. And what's so infuriating is because of Trump, those lies about Mexico are now more than ever in the public eye all over the world. And of course, a more serious consequence of Trump's actions has been increased discrimination and racism against Mexicans in the US, against US citizens of Mexican ancestry. And I'll talk more about media organizations in a moment. But recently, someone told me to check the comments section of the Breitbart website, and I did and the hate towards Mexico and Mexicans is shocking. And one of the founding members of that site, Steve Bannon, was hired by Trump to help him win the election. And talking about winning, these guys definitely know how to win over the hearts and minds of the Mexicans. I'm usually cynical about advertising, but in this case, 
brainwash me. I want this. Now the final reason why I believe many lies exist about Mexico, money. How do I explain this? Well, all media has bias for different reasons and often the reason is money. For example, when the Daily Mail or whoever writes stories about Japan, they already know a cute robot dog story is going to get many views and in turn make the publisher money through advertising. All media works in the same way, no matter what. They need eyeballs. And it's crazy. Do a Google News search for robot dog. Not even robot dog Japan, just robot dog. And loads of news stories appear with robot dog stories from Japan just in the last few weeks. It really is all about what people click on. And for Mexico, it's frustrating that the narrative which gets the eyeballs isn't robot dogs, but it's negative, violent stories. And in the US, like anywhere in the world, media businesses have been created with a specific viewer in mind who they can make money from. We all know about conservative media like Fox News and of course the far right Breitbart News. And those organizations were set up as businesses to make money from a specific audience. They know they'll get the clicks and the advertising by continuing to stir up negative sentiments about Mexico. It's in their financial interests to tell lies about Mexicans and exaggerate Mexico's problems. It's all part of the business plan. And the bottom line really is, it's all about the dollar. And guys, changing subject, to end the video on a lighter note after all this serious talk, you're going to join me for lunch. Welcome to the palm tree establishment, guys. I don't see any palm trees, but I just finished eating my lunch and that was delicious. And don't worry, I am going to show you what I had. It was a set of menu. I started with my consomme soup with a very generous portion of vegetables. I would say above average to normal actually, followed by rice, of course, with a runny fried egg on top. This wouldn't be the same experience if it wasn't runny and of course, I've poured a healthy amount of salsa on my egg and rice. Wasn't that spicy though? This is the scene after I sliced my fork through the egg and it's all very ritualistic, you know? Only at this point, with sufficient amounts of runny egg yolk and salsa absorbed into the rice, am I ready to eat it. And the main course on a huge plate, be steak in a chili sauce with nopales and refried beans on the side and that just hit the spot. Very, very tasty. And I have my Hamaiki tea here, all you can drink as is normal. Only thing missing, dessert. Usually you do at least get a little jelly with these set lunches, but not today. So I am a bit sad about that, but I'm not sad that my curiosity led me to this fine dining experience that even serves up sushi. Look behind me guys, up and down. Have you figured it out? Yeah, this pedestrian tunnel located under the highway you saw in the time lapse has a bunch of local restaurants serving homely food. Forget the hipster food markets, this is where the real Mexico action is guys, where the locals eat and I absolutely love discovering places like this. Well guys, I'm going to get myself out of here now, but back to today's topic. If you agree with what I've said today, my reasons why there are so many lies about Mexico, please give this video a like and share it with your friends. And remember, this is just my opinion. I'm not an expert, but for someone not from the US nor from Mexico, this is what I feel. And if you agree, disagree, leave a comment below. And if this is your first time watching True Mexico, please do subscribe. It'd be great to have you in the community. So I'm Paul, this is True Mexico. Hasta luego.